Welcome to another Facebook Live with Ink Art Designs. My name is Dot Lethbridge and I'm the owner of Ink Art Designs. Ink Art Designs is an online shop where you'll find um, amazing crafting supplies, mainly stamps but also the products to go with them because what's the use of a stamp without some products to make it even more fun. Today, what did I want to talk to you about? A couple of new things I have put into the shop um, online class using the zoom platform and the classes are on the 25th and the 27th of september which is plenty of time if you want to sign up for those ones the the times in there are australian eastern standard time which is melbourne time so if you're looking at, at joining from overseas please get in contact with me and we can work out time zones and we might be able to put together put together a class for you and just add it in I'm really excited about that because I've never done anything like that before, but I'll, I'm, you know, I'll give it a go. The other thing that I want to talk to you about is in our newsletter, every Friday night we have a newsletter that goes out and the newsletter is called Fantastic Friday. On the newsletter I said it was my birthday coming up shortly and I put out the call to people to make me a birthday card and take a picture of it and send me the picture. And I tell you, I've been overwhelmed with birthday cards arriving in my email. So thank you to everybody um, who's done that. Um, I'm going to extend it for another week because today's my birthday. And traditionally, I celebrate my birthday for two weeks. I don't know why I've just done it forever. I don't, I don't think a birthday should be limited to just one day. You know, make it last, celebrate. And so that's what I usually do. So we're going to extend the offer. If you want to make me a birthday card, go ahead, make one, take a picture and send it to me through my emails or through Messenger. So my email is dot at inkupdesigns.com. Then your what you need to do with the card is re-gift it to a friend. So you're going to pay it forward. And, and I think that would be an awesome thing to do and um, and two people get the benefit of the smiles and, and the love that comes with what was put into making the card. So that's the other thing that I've got going at the moment. So that will finish tomorrow week, I think would be a good thing to do. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is, have you seen the new Distress Ink Colour? Checked before I went to bed last night. Here in Australia, it still wasn't released, but when I woke up this morning, there it was, and it is called Crackling Campfire. From what I can gather, it is a colour um, that combines and joins together the orange range and the red range. So it's a really nice intermediate colour. And the more you look at it, the more you're going to fall in love with it. I have placed an order for the entire range of Distress products with um, the campfire. So if you are interested in purchasing those, please send me a message again to dot at inkartdesigns.com or through Messenger. And I'll put your name into the book and make sure that, you're, that you don't miss out. Um, what else? I've got a list I'm reading. Oh, do you remember last week I showed you some really fun and easy, quick ways to use water with Distress Ink? One of the backgrounds that I made, it was the one where I swiped the, um, the cardstock through the craft sheet. Do you remember that one? If you're looking at this on YouTube, there's a little library of all the Facebook Lives. You can go back and, and look at the one and that will refresh your memory. I turned it into a card this week. I did it for rubber dance, but I thought, well, why not use something that I've already made just as a starter? So I'm going to show you what I made. This is it. Can you recognize the background? There's the bit that went through and there's stenciling, tone on tone stenciling. Do you remember? So that's what I made with the, with the background that what literally took me what two or three minutes to make last week so that's 
that's what you do. You just make up a heap of backgrounds and save them for another day and turn them into something really pretty. Okay, now what I want to talk to you today is the demo. Oh, thanks, Diane. It is beautiful. I like that one. It's going to a girlfriend of mine up in Queensland in the state of the free people. If you're watching from overseas, um, I'm based in Victoria, in Geelong, and we're in lockdown at the moment. Not the hard lockdown like Melbourne has, but we are still in a, in a stage three lockdown. So, and we're, we're shut out from the rest of, of Australia. We're, we're, um, we're not, not Australia's favorite people at the moment. So, um, we, I just call Queensland people the land of the free. And I've got lots of friends up in Queensland, so it's nice to, to do that. I'm going to talk to you today about tissue paper. Tissue paper techniques. Um, tissue paper. It's not, it's not the tissue that you blow your nose with. It's um, a special paper, and it's quite thin. I don't know if you can see, you can see my hand just behind it. So it's really thin paper, tears really easily, very flimsy, um, and great for mixed media work. So the first thing you need to know about tissue paper is that it's thin and fragile. The other thing that you need to know is that the majority of tissue papers have two sides so there is a smooth shiny side and there is a side the other side is more fibrous let's say it, so it has a rougher feel to it so if you were to rub the tissue paper in your fingers and look away you can feel which side is the shiny side it's that side and the rougher side is the one that's the other side the shiny side, the smooth side, is the side that you stamp onto. And the reason is because if you, if you stamp onto the fibrous side, it can wick the ink. So what happens is you end up with a blurred image or a distorted image. So you stamp onto the shiny side and you get a nice crisp clear image. What ink do you stamp with? There's a couple of inks that you can use. And um, best ones are either stays on or archival ink, which is this one backwards. Archival ink is an oil based ink and it will set on shiny surfaces. Stays on ink is an alcohol based ink which evaporates quite fast and will set on shiny surfaces. So, they're your two inks. Um, you don't want to use water based inks. You don't use oxides or distress inks or anything like that. You could stamp with paint, but you'd need to use a dark colour. I have pre-stamped a lovely lady. She goes that way. I'm going to put her onto black so you can see. One of the really good things about stamping onto tissue paper is that when you turn her over, you can have her facing the other direction. Just like that. So a really nice easy way if you want to do a bit of mirror stamping and you're doing it on a mixed media background and I'll tell you why I say that in a second. You may, what I've done with her is I've just cut her out with scissors like that, straight edges. If I was to, her, to attach her to my mixed media project, chances are I'll see those cut edges. And I've seen it um, when I've gone looking on Pinterest and all sorts of things and I, I can see those cut edges. And that's fine. You may want the cut edge look. And if that's what you're after, fantastic. Just use a pair of scissors. But if it isn't what you're after and you want the image to blend into your background because tissue paper is really thin, so it almost melts, melts onto your mixed media page. It doesn't melt really. That's the impression it gives. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you down here. Right. I'm going to spray a bit of water into my craft sheet. 
grab a fine paintbrush, pick up some water, and then I'm going to paint, whoops, with the water, and then you just gently pull it away from your image and work your way around. You've got to dry your craft sheet because if you don't, the water will catch under there and it may rip. That's the only reason. So that's all you do. You just work your way around. It's a really relaxing, look at that, just pulls away. So easy. Just gently does it. You can do it in bigger strokes of water. I just like to do it like that because it's all about the process, isn't it? There's no rush in crafting. All right. Let's just take it up here like this. And let's just take this bit off here. You're just pulling it away. And it's a gentle pull. Did you see how I was doing that really gently? Okay. Back up here. And I'm going to hold this up. So now that's what you've got. Okay. And you'll see, I'll go in close, around the edges of the lady, it's a very fibrous look. So that fibrous look is what will blend into your craft, into your mixed media, whether it's a canvas or art journal page or whatever. There is a way, I'm going to shift my cup, shift my craft sheet. Oh, I'm now going to get to see my dirty cutting mat. Had this for about, I don't know, years. This is how you, your prick tool, your prick tool, the pointy end, and this is what you do. I don't know if you can see it all that well, so we'll go here, and you pull, pulling bits away, and you take it bit by bit. This will take forever, but it is how you get the tissue paper right up close to your image without tearing away part of your image because I think that's what a lot of people are scared of doing and you can make it look fibrous as well so I'll just do this little section here because you don't want to sit here for half an hour and watch me prick away with this image it is really relaxing. This is like, um, to me, it's like colouring in. It's just got that soothing kind of um, aspect to it. And you can go right in close. Take it right in. Like that. No one doesn't want to come off. There we go. Alright, back up here. Hello. So I'm going to show you, that's where it's in close, that's where I did the water, and that's where I've done the cut edge. So you'll get three completely different looks. This all depends on what your patience is like and what you want to do. Here's um, a jelly print background, and I made it um, a few weeks ago, and I'm just going to put her on there like that. And I'll just put it on as it is, because it doesn't really matter. Because I'm going to show you how to attach it. Oh, I'm going to show you something else too first. Ooh. I'm going to get a bit of um, oh, lid stuck on top. I need some muscles. I'm going to get a bit of paint. You can do this with gesso as well. Need a bigger paintbrush. Sorry about this, I should have been should have been ready. No, go back to this one. Right. So we'll move it over here. See, now she's all wet. 
got to dry it. Just water down your paint. So gesso is really good. And all of this is done. When you add water, it just thins it out and makes it easier to apply. All right. And you can use any colour. And I do it one squirt at a time because there's nothing worse than having it too thin and then having to go and add more paint and then you end up throwing the paint away. So she goes. I don't even know which side is the right side. Let's go here. Right. And I'm going to paint her face. Roughly. Right, just with that. Down her neck. Oops, don't go over the line stuff. Clean your craft sheet because it's so thin, this um, tissue paper, that the paint will go through it. And when you move it, you end up with paint where you don't want paint to be. We might as well do our hair just quickly. Um, she's a bit rough. Always take the paint away. If you ever move it, just wipe the paint away. And I'm telling you this from experience because I've done it that many times and I've wrecked a nice image. All right. So that's, that's what we've got. Oops. I've just coloured her face and her hair with white. I'm just going to quickly dry that. It won't take much because it's only thin. And the paint was watered down to start with, so there's not a lot there to have to dry. And then I'll show you on the black part. <laughs> there it goes. All right. Not really dry dry but you'll get the idea so that's what she looks like can you see just makes the image pop that little bit you can go in with um oh she was colored products you can go in with i just put my finger in the paint sorry um you can go in with colored paints you can go in with watercolors and that's the next thing I want to talk to you about when you're using tissue paper because the next thing I'm going to do is attach this to a jelly plated background. So here's my jelly plate background. And the best thing to use is just a gel medium. I use the Dina Wakely Media gel, gel medium. And you grab, um, oh sorry. I'm going to just put some gel medium here and probably a, a, a medium thickness will do. This isn't completely dry so we'll just see how it goes. And on the painted side apply gel medium and then carefully attach her so what you're doing and then and then paint so what you're doing is putting gel medium onto one side of tissue paper and then gel medium onto your background gel medium on your background gel medium on your on your image wet to wet that's how you do it and then you go over the top and then you can just sort of smooth it over with your finger gently don't have to be too hard okay here we go and there we have the girl attached so you can see around here where I just did it with the water brush there's a bit of the tissue paper coming out but here where I went in with the pricker, down here, it's up nice and close and you can't really see too much at all. So she looks pretty awesome on that background. I quite like that. Not bad. Now, I really should have grabbed myself some paper towels. Back again. Um, 
So work out your shiny side and your fibrous side and always stamp onto the shiny side because if you stamp onto the fibrous side of the tissue paper, it's going to wick. The ink will wick. Use stays on or use archival. Then you can either cut it. Sometimes you want to cut the image because you want to have a collage look on, on your page and that might be what you're doing. Or you can do the, the water on a fine paintbrush and just gently, gently ease it away. And if you want a really close cut to your image, you go in with your quick tool. I'm sure it has another name, but that's what I like to call it. The other thing I'm going to show you with tissue paper. Oh, sorry. What I want to do is talk about the surfaces that you attach your tissue paper onto because that's really, really important. I have put it onto a paint background. Remember I said it was a gel print and it is a paint one. So paint sets and I can put anything on top of the paint with the gel medium and no problem. But if this had have been a distress ink background, like a blended background or even an oxide background, and then I put gel medium on the tissue paper and attached it, when I used the brush to brush it all out, it would have picked up some of the ink because Distress inks react with water. And gel medium isn't water, but it's a wet product. So what it actually does is, is reactivate Distress inks and you'll end up with um, maybe some coloured marks coming down over your image which you hadn't planned on. It may not have been a look that you're after. And the reason is because you've done it onto a Distress ink background. The same thing can happen to a lesser degree with oxides because oxides are a compound uh, or combination between archival and distress ink. So where there's archival ink, it won't reactivate, but on the water-based side of, of what oxides are made with, that little part will reactivate. So you could have some colour coming back through with oxides. So the kind of things that you put your tissue paper onto would be things that are set. So that can be watercolour paints um, and paint products, gesso um, and things like that. Why, why use tissue paper? I've already said you can do a reverse image like I showed you with the girl earlier. The, the other thing, a reason why you that you could use tissue paper is because it's so fine it it molds to whatever surface so in the past what I've used it for is if I want to stamp onto a curved surface and one project I did was a photo frame and I stamped on and colored the girls or flowers I think it was at the time and then cut them out and put them onto the frame and it goes to the shape of the frame I've seen it done on vegetables, I've seen it done on rocks, and I've seen it done on wood. So it opens up a whole new world of stamping. You can stamp on absolutely anything. I've seen it done on glass. Looks great on glass. That's another day. Um, so I've talked about that reacting with water-based products. So and the reason why tissue paper is a really fun technique. If it's something you haven't tried before, have a go at it. What if I wanted to um, get rid of those fuzzy edges where I hadn't gone in really close? Well, because I've got the gel medium and that's what I've attached it with, it's got a coating of gel medium. Well, scribble sticks, gelatos, distressed crayons big pit pens, all that sort of thing. You could go in with um, some paint and a baby wipe and just sponge and blend your image in. And you can cover up those little bits that you might not want to be looking at. So that's another option that you can do. Um, the other thing I think I should mention is rice paper because I've had people saying, well, what's the difference between rice paper and tissue paper? Rice paper doesn't tear. It's as thin and as um, translucent, probably a little bit more so than what tissue paper can be. But it doesn't rip. It is super strong. So fantastic. And 
I've got some here to show you that I have in the shop. There aren't many left at the moment. So those little ones, these ones, that's rice paper. So you can cut each one out and use them on an art journal page. I'll just do, do the flip away. This one um, has a heap, it's got great arches and script and stars and things like that in that pack. These collage papers, they're on tissue paper, printed tissue paper. So you don't even have to stamp yourself. You can already buy them pre-stamped. This one has one, two, three, four, five different images. I don't know if you can see them on the back. How are we going with the light? Go across there. Right. And this one is an art by Marlene. I've only got that one left at the moment, which is a really nice one. And you can imagine that on an art journal page and then you've got it covered with gel medium and then you go and hit it with your scribble sticks and just bring the whole thing to life or a bit of bit of paint you can have fun with that one heaps of fun with that one or just leave it as it is okay they're the products they're all going to be on sale as soon as I get off, um, off from this demo I'm going to go there's not many of them I'm going to put them on sale uh, I think I'll put 10% off them because we used them today well we didn't use them but we talked about tissue paper and I've only got one jar of gel medium left at the moment, so I'll throw that, I think, on sale as well. Why not? The other thing that I wanted to mention is... No, I think that was it. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, people are saying happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, feeling it today. It's been so busy and, and a little surprise is left on my doorstep today. Thank you to the person who left me a bottle of wine and a bunch of flowers and perfume and to my son who was who was um, on his way to work and happened to drive past because he's allowed to do that um, and made me panna cotta. Mm. So I guess what's for dessert tonight, panna cotta. And don't forget if you make a card for me Send me a picture, take a picture and send it to me. You'll go into a drawer and I'll give away a prize and then you re-gift it to someone else. So it's double the fun. That's what I'd like to have done. And that will go until tomorrow week. And don't forget that the to check out the Zoom online classes. I'm really excited. I should have had it here for you to show you what the first class is. It's all made up and everything. Well, it's on the website. Just go to www.inkartdesigns.com and check out the website. I've been working so hard over the last 12 months. When you go to www.inkartdesigns.com, it's not just a shop. There's a blog attached to it as well where um, I post all the, the work that I do and also from my design team. And actually, if you follow the blog, you'll get the early announcements for stuff when it arrives. The other thing it has is free tutorials up the top and now I'm going to start online classes. Um, I mentioned if you wanted to, to let me know if you're interested in, in um, the new distress range, just drop me a line and I've got a pre-order in the system so I'll make sure that you don't miss out beautiful colour. I just like that idea that, that he's going to transition that orange into reds. It's really nice. I was hoping for pink. Maybe next time. The other thing that I have on the way is the new release from Art by Marlene. Um, it was going to cost an absolute fortune in freight and um, in order to keep my prices down and to stay competitive, it's going to take the slow boat. So um, it will be a little while before it gets to me, just so you're aware of that. But it is coming and my prices will be good because I've taken the cheaper option for you. So I can keep it. Thank you again. I, I'm, I'm on Facebook Live at the moment and there's lovely birthday greetings coming up. Yes. Now, Sam Marcards has just mentioned that you can use the, the tissue paper on candles as well. Beautiful. I've I've done Christmas ones and coloured little elves in and stuck them around and then you can 
around the candle and there's a special technique for that which you can find if you go onto YouTube. Um, not a good idea to burn those candles in case the tissue paper catches light. I haven't heard of it happening but don't want to be the one to tell you to burn the candles and then have your house burn down so don't burn those candles but they look really fantastic and you just um, can wind a bit of twine and a few decorative bits around the bottom and they make great centerpieces at Christmas time or for birthdays or for any occasion really um, so Art by Marlene's coming the new Distress Ink colours are coming I'm just holding off for another week with Crafty Individuals and then I'm going to get a whole heap of Crafty Individual stamps in and I think that's about all the news I've got so in the meantime I hope you're having so much fun with your stamps and your products a lot of people have been buying the products and i thank you for that and i hope you're using them because no point having them if you're not using them um wishing everyone a really crafty day thank you see you next time